What is up Web Studio creators? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can start collecting data from your website using Web Studio's forms component. For the tutorial today, I'll be using a pre-made landing page template that I've created on Web Studio. And in this landing page, right at the bottom, I have a contact section, which is what we'll be using to collect user data. If you wanted to get started on Web Studio and you wanted to kickstart the project, I'll have this landing page linked in the description down below, which you can open up and clone the different sections into your own project. So to get started with the forms component, we are going to head over to our components and we're going to add a new form component. You'll see in our navigator, this has created a new form instance. From there, if I expand the form, you'll see that we have multiple parts to our form so that you can really create any type of form that you need. In the default, we have an input label, then the text input, the following input label, and the following text input, and a button. So with my form content selected, I'm going to also add a text area field. I'm gonna drag that above my button. And I'm simply going to duplicate the input label above my new text area. Now this is a good start to our form, but we also want to change the labels, the placeholders, and what is allowed in the different fields. To do so, I'm going to simply select my input label, and if I double click on the text, I can change the label's content. So let's change this to first name. I'm going to keep the email label and I'm gonna change my third label to message as it's a field that I want users to be able to leave a message. From there, I wanna then change the types of input that I have. So if I select my text input, head over to properties, I'll then be able to change the name of my input, the type of the input. So for this one, I just want it to be plain text. Do I want to add any placeholder text, which in this case I do. So I'm just gonna say, John is the placeholder for my first name. Do I want it to be required or not? I do want this to be required. And do I want this field to be automatically in focus when a user loads the page? So they don't need to click on it. I'm then going to head over to my second input, which is my email input. And I'm gonna keep the name as email. But this time I'm going to change the type to email type. This will require a user to have an email formatted input to be able to submit the form. As a placeholder, I'm just going to type in here, john at doe.com. So it's really easy for users to understand it's an email field. Lastly, I'm going to edit my text area field. And here I'm going to add the name as message as it's the message that a user would be submitting. And as the placeholder, I'll just type in something along the lines of, let us know why you're getting in touch. This field, I will also make it required. Now I've got my basic structure set up here. I now want to adjust what happens when the form gets submitted, as well as what happens when there's an error in the form. To edit this, I simply go ahead and select my form instance from the navigator, change the state to success, and this will reveal what happens when a user submits the form. So you can see here, I've just got a simple message. Thank you for getting in touch. I want to add a second line to this and say something along the lines of when we will reply. So to do so, I'm just gonna jump over to my components and add some new text. Let's just add here, we'll be in touch in the next 24 hours. Great, so I've got my success part created. I now want to manage my error messages. So I'm gonna go back to my form instance. In the properties panel, this time I'm going to select error and you'll see there's a new line of text that appears below my form, which is my error message. For this use case, I'm just gonna change the content of this message, but just like the success field, you can really add any other component into your error message. Okay, so I've got my success and error messages done. I'm gonna go back to my form, change the state back to its initial state. And now I'm going to begin styling my form. Styling our form instance and everything within that instance works the exact same way as styling any other element on Web Studio. You have access to the full set of no-code styles so that you can really create any look and feel of your choice. With the magic of editing, I'm gonna quickly fast forward the styling part to my completed form. Okay, I finished styling my form. and As you can see, I have customized some of the base style options, but I've also added some hover effects when users hover over specific inputs. And I've added focus effects to show users which fields are active if they're no longer hovering over them. To create these effects yourself, simply select the part of the form you want to change. And in your design tokens, on the dropdown, you have the option to change their state. The ones you'll be most likely using with the forms element will be the hover, the focus, and the placeholder state. In this case, you can see on hover, 
I've applied a wider border as well as a box shadow. And then on focus, I've simply applied a box shadow to the side. And this works with any element that you have within your form field. Checking then our form on different device sizes, you can see if we switch to other breakpoints, our form behaves quite well responsively and adapts to the right sizes. If we then preview this on a live website, we can jump over to the live site here. If I scroll down to my new contact form section, I'll just type in some basic info. So let's go test for the name, test at test.com for the email. Hello, I am Alex. And I submit this. We'll then see our success message that has been filled out that we styled earlier in the video. All form data is then sent to your Web Studio email address. And in a future video, we'll cover how to set up forms and data collection to be able to send that data to third party providers such as Notion, Airtable, other databases or collections of your choice. That's pretty much it for the Web Studio Forms video. If you'd like to use everything I showcased in this video, there's a link in the description down below that will allow you to open the project in an editable mode and you can quickly copy the different sections into your own project. Let me know if there's anything that you'd like to see for a future video or if you have any other questions. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.